Michigan Magazine is kept on the road by our many Michigan friends. Cops and Donuts Bakery, downtown Clare. A winning combination. Cops and Donuts. Thunder Bay Resort, a destination for all seasons with special events and packages. Thunder Bay Resort in Hillman. Experience the beauty, artistry, and taste of northern Michigan. Come to Amish Country Natural Products on Mount Tom Road, north of Mile, just off M33. From arts and crafts to fresh foods and vegetables, all natural, all local, all good. Stop by and get acquainted with Amish Country Natural Products, 1454 North Mount Tom Road, Mile. The Michigan-made rebounding mailbox pool. Never again worry about the winter snowplow taking out your mailbox with this ingenious rebounding pool. Your mailbox takes a hit and keeps coming back year after year. Call now or visit their website, toughmailboxes.com. On this week's Michigan Magazine, we learn about quill trails, more specifically the Timberland Quill Trail in northeastern lower Michigan. It's a growing pastime dedicated to the Michigan quilting heritage and is drawing enthusiasts from throughout the country. Join us as we hit the trail with Susan Schatz. Then we bring you amazing Michigan wood-turning artists from throughout the state as we visit the wood-turning studio of Cliff Lounsbury. It's all coming up on this edition of Michigan Magazine. The heritage of the quilt and the art of quilting is a subject that's always fascinated us at Michigan Magazine. We've discovered through our travels around the state that this centuries-old art form knows no bounds, found practice to nearly every culture around the world. From its utilitarian use of keeping families warm and safe from the elements, to also maintained as heirlooms, documenting one's heritage and incorporating materials and blocks that tell a unique story. We've interviewed and featured on Michigan Magazine many quilters. Individual quilters, quilt groups, heirloom quilt restorationists, producers and hosts of quilting television shows. We've attended quilting bees, quilting retreats, quilting auctions dedicated to world disaster relief. Quilting is a pastime, a hobby, a business. And to those who truly love making quilts and giving them away to family, friends, and the needy, it can become an obsession. Quilts are objects one can wrap oneself up in and feel the love and devotion in each stitch. Whether it's hand-stitched, inch by inch, or assisted by a bit of machine wizardry, the love is still there among the blocks and designs placed strategically in each quilt. Everyone knows someone or knows someone who knows someone who quilts. Quilts have always been head turners. And those who've been bitten by the quilting bug have taken that attribute to a new level in what has turned into the quilt trail. On today's show, we feature one such trail in northeastern Michigan's Oscoda County. The main artist and administrator of the Timberland Quilt Trail is Susan Schantz of Cummins. What exactly is a quilt trail? We visited with Susan at her makeshift workshop at the Clinton Township Fire Hall to find out what the buzz was all about. Well, the quilt trail started down in southern Ohio in 2001. A lady named um, Donna wanted to paint a quilt block to honor her mother. So she painted a big quilt block and put it up on her tobacco barn. And from there, it's just caught on. And we now have quilt trails in 47 states and Ontario. Okay, these aren't actual quilts. They're kind of replicas of quilts on, on wood and that it kind of stimulates the, uh, what, what, the heritage and uh, the yes, uh, kind of memory of quilts. quilting heritage. You know, rural counties have a lot of uh, quilting traditions. Mm -hmm. And so this is a way to bring them basically off the bed and out of the closet and out into the public where, where everybody can enjoy them. Mm -hmm. So quilters will paint one and put it up that represents maybe a quilt from the family or, mm -hmm. or that type of thing, their favorite hobby or interest, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. The quilting goes back many, many generations. I mean, oh, yeah. 
hundreds, in my family, thousands, it's five generations. Five generations, yeah. and usually they at times tell a story of that particular time. Right, it does. Uh, on a lot of blocks you'll see, you know, we have one up that's called a log cabin, mm -hmm. and that dates back from the Civil War. Wow. So they go back quite a long distance, mm -hmm. and, and some of these traditional patterns have been passed down for years and years and years. Uh -huh. So we have one going on here in northern Michigan. Mm -hmm. Does it, is it limited to uh, Skoda County? Or? Yeah, generally the, a quilt trail is one county. And, and, and frankly, that's enough area to cover. <laughs> <laughs> and it's usually done by, uh, you know, small groups. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of women do it because this is, this is their passion, you know. Uh -huh. So um, basically one county takes it on and they, they do their county and then another county next to them might join in. Mm -hmm. uh, Elcona County has one, okay. so theirs will feed right into ours. Roscommon County and Ogemaw County are starting up there, so we're going to have four counties adjacent to each other mm -hmm. that you can go from trail to trail, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I think that's really exciting. Yeah, it is. Now, the one here on Oscoda County, how many are there on display now? There are 14 up. Okay. One is waiting to go up, and two are being painted. I usually have two that I'm painting, two that I'm working on you know, getting the designs, and then mm -hmm. I'm always talking, talking, talking to people about, you know, I'm, I'm all, my goal is 12 a year. Okay. And, and the first year I did my 12, and I've got 18 now okay. in, in the pipeline, either up or going to be up. Uh -huh. so. so it could make a, a nice afternoon or a nice day for people to come up in Osco exactly. County. Uh, there's a map, a location, um, you know, yep. placement. We have, a, we have a quilt trail guide that you can pick up at the chamber. I also have a website so it can be downloaded, okay. uh, a PDF out there that can you can download and go on your way. Uh, we're also looking at geotracking, okay. geocaching, mm -hmm. so that um, Right. People can just put in a coordinate and they can follow the coordinates and get to a quilt trail and, you know, we'll have a wow. little box for them and wow. all that kind of so good stuff. So each quilt that's located in Oscoda County, uh, does it have a story to tell about its location pretty much? Or? A lot of them do. A lot of them do. They're um, like the one we'll see on my house. That quilt pattern came from my great-grandmother. Okay. And so to me it meant a lot because I have a quilt with that pattern on it. Sure. So that okay. was... An obvious choice for me. Susan, tell us a little bit about uh, what got you inspired in the world of quilting in the first place. Well, my great-grandmother quilted, and all my aunts on both sides of the family mm -hmm. and my mother quilted, and so I grew up around quilts. And I, I never learned when I was young, but when I got out of school and was working, I, I actually took a quilt class and... and I thought, well, it's another nice little hobby. But when I took my first stitch, it was like, I, I just was passionate about it. I, I love making quilts. It's something, giving a person a quilt is very rewarding. You know, they love it. Uh, mm -hmm. It's, you know, it's just a special thing to make a baby quilt or a wedding quilt or that type of right. thing. Right, very special. It gets to be kind of an heirloom passed down from generation yeah. to generation. Well, I, and I hope my quilts are well used and well loved. I would rather they were lugged around and worn out as opposed to, you know, mm -hmm. sitting, never being used. I want to, you know, celebrate our quilting heritage because it's big up here. And I want to uh, somehow promote people coming here to look at our, our land, our, our you know, all the rivers and lakes and everything that we've got here. We've got so much here. And this is just one way to bring people, if you're not a hunter, or you're not fishing, or you're not doing those outdoor activities, then this is something else you can do. Mm -hmm. And um, we've had quilt groups from Hale. We've had visitors from as far away as Florida, Ohio. We've had visitors who have not come to this area before who've come here because they are following quilt trails. Mm. And so I think that's a real positive thing for us, go to county. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, I believe in giving back. You know, if you're going to be part of a community, you need to give back to that community. So this is my way of doing it. And Susan's giving back has become an inspiration to many in the county. The spirit of giving is spreading with more and more wanting to become part of the Timberland Quilt Trail in Oscoda County. A chance to travel the back roads in search of each of the quilt blocks. 
They're scattered throughout the county along beautiful, less traveled sections. And if you're lucky, you may run into some of the block owners who may tell you a bit of the history of each block they represent. So be sure and check out the Timberland Quill Trail website, pick up a trail map at the Chamber office in downtown Lyle, and grab your camera and hit the trail. The Timberland Quilt Trail. Or you could Google the words Michigan Quilt Trails to discover some trails near you. They're throughout the state now. It's another way to explore and appreciate Michigan's quilting heritage off the beaten path. Michigan Magazine is being brought to you in part by... Hale Hardware, your do-it center at Hale, Michigan. Much more than a regular hardware store, providing everything you need for whatever your project is, along with a knowledgeable sales staff to get her done. Serving Northern Michigan since 1946. Hale Hardware, south of M65 at Ainsley in Hale. Remembering good times and great food, Frank and Lisa invite you to Tim Lizzie's in Mayo for a blast back to the 50s and 60s when food was made from scratch, including home ground Angus burgers. A full menu of great food and good memories await you at the new Tim Lizzie's of Mayo. Clemex Sales and Service on Mapes Road, west of Mile, your complete recreational vehicle sales and service connection. Visit their beautiful showroom of new and pre-owned ATVs, lawnmowers, power equipment, snowmobiles, utility vehicles, and more. Clemex Sales and Service is also the home of the American-made Victory Motorcycle Line on display at Clemex on Mapes Road, Mayo. Borch Healthcare of Rose City and West Branch. Skilled nursing and rehabilitation facilities in beautiful northern Michigan. The Rose City facility is a leader in dementia care, specializing in the treatment and care for those with Alzheimer's. For more information or to schedule a tour, call us now. The woodlands of Michigan are one of our most beautiful natural resources. This we've learned time and time again on Michigan Magazine. Our state is one of the few that replant or reforest more than is harvested, creating large new tracts of trees every year. It is no wonder that our trees and forests attract the inspired wood artists to create beautiful pieces from the harvest. One growing form of wood artistry is the wood turner. These artists make use of parts of the tree that normally would be discarded. These are the artists that are discovering a wonderful beauty within the trees themselves. We travel to the workshop of wood turner Cliff Lounsbury of Tawas City, Michigan. On this early January morning, we were treated to a local gathering of wood turners from throughout the state. Cliff, nice to see you. Nice to meet you. By golly, for the first time. And what we're here to learn about today is the craft of wood turning. Okay. You are a wood turner. Yes, sir. And uh, what do you do besides wood turning? I mean, as far as, do you make a living at wood turning? Or well, do you do primarily else? the bulk of my income is derived from wood turning. Um, I also guide for steelhead on the river, Osaba River, in the oh. spring and the fall. Hey, now I know where to go. Some guys say I have a pretty nice situation. That's a nice job. Yes. Yes. And you get paid for it. I do. Yeah. Well, now, today we've got a gathering of, uh, well, quite a group here of uh, wood turners. Yes. From all over the state of Michigan. Yes. And perhaps the, the first thing we should do then, Cliff, is this. Let's inter you introduce me to some of these uh, craftsmen and where they're from and uh, maybe a little bit of what they do, okay? Well, First of all, I'd like to apologize for how clean my shop is. Yes. Okay, well, you know, so that tells me one thing: that you are a busy man. Yes. All right. This is Russ Clenard. Hi, Russ. Hey, Joe. Where are you from? I'm from Ann Arbor, Michigan. Okay. Uh, it's funny that I got into wood turning because actually I do autopsies for a living. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> we haven't done a subject on that yet, Barry. <laughs> Maybe one of these days we'll, there you go. who knows? Yeah. All right, tell us a little bit more. Here. Um, I've been turning for approximately 17 years. I just okay. started out as a, a hobbyist. I have a, a big shop in Ann Arbor where I have about 15 lays. Maybe that, not that many, maybe about 12. Okay. Um, and I have professional turners come in there uh, periodic about Every other month we have a professional turner come in. Um, we've had uh, Don Derry from Seattle, Washington, Lyle Jamison from Traverse City, Frank Sudo mm -hmm. from uh, Saskatchewan, Canada. Oh boy. Yeah, and they come in. Uh, we usually have a gathering of um, anywhere from 30 to 35 mm -hmm. guys. And uh, these demonstrators will teach us their mm -hmm. techniques, uh, how to how to turn wood, how to carve wood, how to paint wood, how to texture okay. wood. Um, wood turning is is uh, gone from a craft to an art now. Really, it is. Yeah. It really has. Yeah. Yeah. And you'll see some pieces that are very artistic. Okay. Yeah. Do you have a piece here? One um, of these years? Yeah, this is a piece of this is a piece of spalted maple. 
It's hollowed out through a small hole, but that's the trick. It really isn't hollowed out through a small hole. <laughs> what I've done is, yeah. I've turned this to make it look like one piece, Okay. cut it in half, and then hollowed each one of those out, glued it back together, Beautiful. and put a piece of uh, metal around it so Beautiful. it hides that seam. Beautiful. Well, Russ, nice talking to you. Nice talking now, who we got over here, Cliff? This is Tom Montford. Hi, Tom. Still good to meet you. Where are you from? Fenton, Michigan. Fenton, right. Michigan. Well, I'm a machine repairman by trade Okay. For General Motors. Uh, I met these guys about four years ago in Brighton uh, when our guild met there. And uh, since we've moved to uh, Russ's studio and, and meet out of that uh, area in Ann Arbor. Uh-huh. Uh, I'm the president of the guild right now. So how many members do you have in the guild? Uh, we have had up to 60 people. Okay. And, and is this just from the it, state it of Michigan? Varies. Yes. It, well, okay. it's basically in the uh, southeastern quadrant of Michigan. Uh, there's four chapters within the state. Uh, there's the uh, Ann Arbor, Paw Paw, uh, Traverse City, and Detroit area, which turning out of Sterling Heights. Is this your work here? Is this yes. is this painted? Uh, actually, it's uh, marker on uh, oh, is carved it? wood. Yeah. Okay. Beautiful. Beautiful. Nice talking with you. Who we got over here, Cliff? This is Keith. Keith, Keith is our resident Hi, long Keith. hair. <laughs> Where are you from, Keith? <laughs> Grand Blank, Michigan. Grand Blank. All right. My gosh, there's some good representation here from the southern part of the state. And uh, Keith, uh, whatever got you interested in what is your profession? I'm a concrete finisher by trade. Uh -huh. And uh, had woodworking as a hobby for a long time. Had done a little bit of turning in high school. and. Just have gotten heavier into turning the last two years, three years. Okay. And so you were uh, interested in uh, turning because of it, it what? It's uh, a little bit more immediate gratification than a lot of other wood turning. Uh -huh. so you can go out to your shop in the morning and pretty much have a piece finished that day or yeah. within, right. you can make... <laughs> A piece like that probably took two hours. Oh, that's your piece? Yeah, I made that one. Oh, that's it's, nice. You can finish a piece right then, and it makes you feel good then. Uh -huh. Some woodworking projects, you work months on them. And I'm not a patient person. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anything else here is yours? This is a Amboina bowl that oh, I made. Oh, my. Oh, probably six months ago. What, what that's kind of wood is this? Amboina. It's out of Cambodia. Hardwood, is it? Or yeah. Or? Yeah. Very uh, Dense, goodness. Nice color to it. That's well, a burl. That is also. beautiful. The swirly green is the. Mm -hmm. Okay. Burl. Well, Keith, it's nice talking to you. This is Mike. Uh, Mike McConnell from Hillman. Hi, Mike. Right. Do you have a piece here that you uh, created? Pieces here. All right. Let's take a quick look at some of these. And uh, you've been wood turning for how long, Mike? Uh, seriously, about eight years. And what was your profession? I used to work for Pepsi Cola. Pepsi Cola. I was a repairman. Okay, all right. And, and semi retired now. So semi retired. Yeah, more or less. Up at Hillman. Yep. Michigan. And uh, so these right here are your pieces. Now this one is turning on a little pedestal here. What, what do you call that? Well, that, I have to have a title for it. It's just a textured piece that uh, when it turns, the colors try to stay, I try to get them to stay on one side or the other. Okay. So the yellow stays on this side, the blue stays on that side. Well, I'll be darned. Well, nice talking with you, Mike. I'm submit some of these pieces. Oh, great. Well, uh, this is Lyle Jamison. Lyle, Lyle Jamison is uh, from Traverse City. Hi, Lyle. I'm glad to meet you from Traverse City. Yeah, we got somebody representing the northwest part of the state. Well, we let them in every now and every then. Every now and then, yeah. <laughs> uh, how long have you been uh, wood turning, Lyle? Oh, that's a long story. All my life, really. I grew up with it. My dad uh, was a wood pattern maker in Detroit and always had a shop and uh -huh. I've been doing it all my life. And just how long have you lived in the Traverse City area? Oh, 28, 30 years. 20, 30 years. And what do you do up there? Are you a professional wood turner? Is that all you do or do you have another profession? I just gave up my day job a couple years ago. <laughs> so I have fun uh, seven days a week. Uh -huh. What was that? My other job, I was working with the newspaper okay. to help manage the circulation. I grew up with an appreciation for the, the wood and the texture and, and working with it. Uh, I, the, what drew me to the lathe was the instant gratification, the, uh, the ability to uh, watch the pieces take form right in front of your eyes and, mm -hmm. and uh, the relatively mm -hmm. uh, quick uh, nature that you can do a bowl or, mm -hmm. or something relatively quickly. I was mm -hmm. doing a lot of furniture and things before that took months mm -hmm. and uh, the lathe uh, got me sucked in. It's real 
Habit forming. Why I'm turning is because it's fun and I enjoy yeah. it. There's never been um, access on a, on a public level, on a wide scale public level in Michigan of what us got, what the wood turners in Michigan are doing. Thanks to the wood turners that shared their talent with us at the shop of Cliff Lounsbury and wish for them the best in their efforts in creating a new awareness of the Michigan wood turning artist. Cops and Donuts Bakery downtown Clare, what began as a crazy idea among nine police officers to purchase the historic Clare City Bakery, quickly became an international phenomenon, carrying out a Michigan tradition with delicious donuts, pies, pastries, breads, original coffee, and more, plus a full menu at the new adjacent Traffic Stop Diner. Downtown Clare, a winning combination, Cops and Donuts. Rose Valley Winery on Beachwood Road in Rose City. See what thousands are raving about, creating a delicious variety of award-winning Michigan wines. Stop by and taste for yourself. The taste of Michigan is yours at Rose Valley Winery. Thanks for joining us for this week's Michigan Magazine. For more information on today's show, email us or visit our website and stay in touch 24-7 via our social network. Have a great week. We'd like to thank all those that help keep Michigan Magazine on the road. Thunder Bay Resort, a destination for all seasons with special events and packages. Thunder Bay Resort in Hillman. Cops and Donuts Bakery, downtown Clare. A winning combination. Cops and Donuts. Shopping for that special person just got easier when you shop at Rose City Drug at 2640 North M33, just south of the Rose City City Limits. You'll find gifts for everyone on your list from 1 to 100. Shop online or in person at Rose City Drug, Rose City. Discount Foods, Downtown Mayo. Find national name brand foods and merchandise at sharply discounted prices. Shop the smart way and please the family without breaking the budget. Discount Foods, Downtown Mayo.